In this vlog, you'll learn new things about pop-ups and sprinkler valves and how a sprinkler valve got the attention of the water company. Adjustable nozzles are not designed to do 360. See how there's a gap there? That's why you want to use 360 nozzles. So the difference between a 360 on the right and an adjustable here on the left, as you see the spray port is on the side of the nozzle and it cannot open 360 degrees. This is designed to do 360. So this is what the 360 is supposed to look like, even all the way around. That's the screen from this nozzle, but the top part of it broke off and it's stuck down in there. It's, I tried to get out with my screwdriver and wasn't able to get it out. It's, it's hitting a ledge here or something. I tried to flush it out just now, and that didn't work. So I guess I'm going to have to take the pop-up apart. Yeah. I pushed the soil level down and used my channel locks to get this started. Sometimes you have to grab the body with another pair of channel locks. But I was able to do it without doing that. This dude is right up against the concrete. Finally got it out. The one on the left is what it's supposed to look like. It has that lip on top. One, two, three times four gallons per minute. 12 plus half of that is 14 and this line can only handle 8 which is a 3 quarter inch line so it's kind of wimpy this valve is bleeding through it's coming out at the other end down there it's leaking out of a pop up down there so I need to turn water off to these valves so that I can take this valve apart. The shutoff is down here and this is just the way it was set up. I didn't do any of this. Um, warning, if you're squeamish about bugs you might want to wait until I say it's safe to look again. Ready? Here we go. The valve handle is has to be cleared away to get at it and that is gross so I'll be using a trowel not my hands okay it's safe to look again like that and I cleared it out with my trowel Bonnet off. And see how scummy the diaphragm is. That doesn't keep it from shutting off, but we're going to look on the underside. Oh my gosh, look at all that. That will keep it from shutting off. So I'm not going to, there's there's so much of that junk there, it's embedded in it, so I'm going to put a new diaphragm in it. One of the reasons I don't like male thread nozzles, like Toro's, is because if the screen is full of sand or something, it is nearly impossible to get it out. You can't even flush it out. You try doing this, and the problem is you have to be careful not to score the threads 
uh, up in the top up here and as you can see here I accidentally marred this here so I'm hoping that isn't a permanent problem and I have to replace the pop-up but I'm gonna try to flush this out right now but I don't think it's gonna happen see this line is on right now that needs to be adjusted but anyway this line is on right now and see there's it's so clogged that that should be a geyser right now I'll take this Toro pop-up apart and show you how much sand was jammed in there to hold that screen in there like that. I cut the shaft with my cutter hoping to get below the screen but I accidentally cut in the middle of it. But you can see cross-section of all the sand that's jammed in there. Here we have another one that's jammed in there. I got this one out with a lot of effort. I'm going to flush this out. Get the rest of that crud out of there and hope I didn't damage the threads on there. I'm going to put a new nozzle on. I did that successfully. Now on to the next job. I got called here because um, the guy's out of the country, and he got a call from the water company saying that he was using a bunch of water, um, and the water was flowing constantly. So they came out and shut off his water supply to his property. I opened up this valve box, and you can hear water passing through one of these valves. Kind of tough to tell which one it is. Kind of sounds like this one. I'm going to pull this off. I didn't get any resistance when I did that. If I would have got a bunch of resistance, like there was a lot of water flowing through here, like I was going to get a face full of water if I took that off, then I would have tightened it back down. But I didn't feel any at all. So I'm just going to spin this off. It appears that water is just barely, barely coming out. See the water movement? Compared to the next one, I'm going to put that back on because I don't want to get debris in there and I don't want those little teeny frogs jumping in there either. So we're going to take this off. There's another valve box here. I'm going to take this barbecue off of here and open that up and see if I hear any noise over here. I hear no noise in here at all. That little frog. So apparently it's that valve there. I'm going to turn the water off here. And the proper one to turn off is this one. You want to leave that one open so the water pressure stays up inside this cavity here because there's a strong spring in there and a plunger. And if you turn this off in the wrong order, you can that plunger can go cockeyed on you and then you got to service this thing. So now I'll go get my tools and take that valve apart, see what kind of sand or whatever is stuck under the diaphragm. 
Okay, flip it over and what do we have? We have some debris embedded in here. You can see that in here. And we have glue down inside there. So I gotta go get something to get that out. So there's a few different ways you can get that debris out. You can use needle nose pliers. And there's one, one of these gizmos you can get at an auto parts store. I got mine at O'Reilly's. You press this and at the other end a grabber thing appears like crab. I'm going to try this. Okay, I was able to flush that glue out. There you go. And I put a new diaphragm in there because I didn't like the looks of this one. After all that junk was on there. And this is the original diaphragm. It's probably 20 years old or something. So I'll put it back together. And no more noise. And it's not turning anymore. So you might wonder how that little tiny water movement that you saw back there at the valve could be enough for the water company to shut this property water off. I have a feeling that that big chunk of glue that you saw was probably um, jammed up underneath the diaphragm initially. And when I took the diaphragm out, the glue dropped down into the valve. But with that big chunk in there, that would have had that diaphragm open much wider. That water would have been flowing through there pretty good. And that would have justified it. Remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation. Also remember the resources site linked below that has most of the products for sale that I've discussed in these videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.